What's going on guys, KG here, the Football Capital Round 1 A-League Review Show. We're here with a couple of regular panellists in Borche and Seba, um, but a very special guest in Alex Brosk joining us on the show. Thanks for coming on board. No worries boys, good to be here. Mate, um, we get, we're going to touch on the Sydney Derby a little bit later and, and that's you know why we brought in the big guns, but I um, wanted to touch a little bit on, on the round itself and you know, obviously, round one, you sort of don't know what to expect. A lot of us um, in our predictions didn't quite get it right. But if we go uh, around the grounds and just talk about the defending champions, you know, in their match against Brisbane Raw, to start off with, Melbourne City 2, Brisbane Raw 1. Um, sort of, for me, it was like, okay, they went through the motions and then got the result. I mean, boys, chime in here. How did you see that game coming ab- coming around? To be honest, I thought I thought Melbourne could have killed the game off in the first half. To be fair, they got the two goals. They, they had chances to get maybe a third. But I think once Brisbane got that got that goal, it it, made, it looked like it was going to be a draw. Especially towards the end, they got that goal disallowed just, I think, just about offside. Yeah, he was offside from the cross, yep. But um, look, I think, didn't they lose their captain early on in the first half, Brisbane? They did. They did. And, um, and, and you thought it was game over from there, yeah, right? Yeah, but you know what? I think they did well. I think I predicted them not to make the six. But um, I mean, look, it's only round one. But to be fair, I think they did towards the end of that game. They they did well. And I, I know I know Scott Jamison at the end of the game on his interview was wasn't too happy with their second half performance. But look, at the end of the day, opening round three points for for the champions. I think they got to push on from here. I'm not sure who they got next week. Um, we'll, we'll check that out in a second. They got next week, <laughs> but but uh, I think it's a good start for them. Uh, d- definitely a good start, Seba. Man, look. The champions take the field first game of the season. They did what they had to do. And, you know, some adversity thrown at them towards the end, like Borcher just said. They still got the result. That's what champions do. Um, Brisbane Raw, you know, this, it's a bad start to the season, obviously. But they got something there to build on. They got a goal. And it's round one. So long to go. Nothing to be to be worried about so far, I think, especially against the champions. 2-1. It's not horrible. Yeah, you take, you take um, well, for City, you take the three points. You go away. They've got Adelaide next week, Borch, um, away in, in Adelaide. Um, Broski, do you want to touch on that one? Yeah, look, I think it will be a long season for the Raw. I think uh, they lost a couple good attacking young players, Danzaki, uh, Wenzel Halls. So, and, and I think it's, um, look, those boys having played last year probably would have benefited from, you know, all that game time last year and would have done a lot better this year. But, you know, in leaving, he's got to find some new attackers. And, um, look, I think it, they're in for a long season, Brisbane, to be honest. And I think City, um, look, a lot has been spoken about with their front three, obviously. Naboo, yeah. McLaren, uh, Leckie coming back. I think they'll take a bit of time to get going. But um, in the end, they were lucky, yeah. I mean, Raw, when they actually took it to them in that second half, they, they probably deserved that equaliser. I think it's, um, you know, a little bit unfair how it was taken away from them. The whole offside thing for me... Yeah. Is a bit of a joke. <laughs> I Should be a benefit rule. to the attacker, right? Well, as a striker, absolutely, yeah. and, and, and as a football fan, not even as a striker. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you want to see goals, not, not look for reasons to take them away. And I think that offside rule needs to be uh, looked at and adjusted. And um, you know, we shouldn't be looking at millimeters to take goals away. I think that in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, they tried it by using a thicker line, right? And I think in the right. Premier League, they've they changed might be, it now as well. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if they've done that here, but yeah. I would like that. Because we all looked at it and thought that's very, very close. Yeah. Like it could go either way. And if that's the case, then give it to the attacking team. If the, if it's if it was a bit more than that, everyone would have said, yeah, okay, offside. And, yeah. then, and then you're happy with the decision. But um, look, a little bit cruel. But I think City again, they they will get better. They'll they'll improve. They should have killed the go- game off early, and they didn't. It wasn't clear with the naked eye, pretty much, it, to, no. to say, oh, look, he was offside, and it shouldn't count. I mean, it was a really tight one, and you know. Here, neither here or there. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what they brought in VAR, but yeah. it does need some tweaking, and you know, we'll we'll see how that one pans but, but, out. But before we move on, Kev, yeah. with, with Raw, we touched on them in the in the uh, preview. It's good to see that some of the young players are coming through. I know there's some lone players from, um, I think the MPL in, in Brisbane, there, Queensland. Yep. I think they they got some young players coming through from there. I mean, if they can if they can be there thereabouts around the top six and then maybe push them for next season if that's the direction they want to go. I know they got rid of some young players at the start that maybe could have fit into this squad, but you never know. Maybe they, if they're trying to build something for the next season or the season after that. Yeah, we sort of commented on that, especially with COVID and, you know, 
you know, players coming in from other countries and whatever, and them being able to travel back and forth that some teams may have invested in, in the um, in the leagues underneath them, which is good to see, right? Like, that's obviously they're the channels that we want to see players come through. So um, credit to Brisbane Raw. I honestly thought it was going to be um, a bigger scoreline than that, but they have they did well. Um, and, you know, the champion's probably just too good. You know, you get scared of that front three if you look at it on paper. I don't think they were as effective as we thought they would be. Lecky yeah. probably... Didn't like, step up. It's like Alex said, they're going to take a bit of time to, to yeah. get some cohesion. It's, I think it's like Lecky to me reminds me of Barbarossa going to Sydney. Mm. You know, you got a weapon of a player, but yep. it's going to take time regardless. Yeah, but I think once they get going, that's when it's going to be dangerous. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely come good. Uh, there was a Melbourne derby um, in Western United versus um, Tony Popovich's Melbourne victory. Uh, there was uh, a few streaming issues from what I saw on uh, on Twitter, but um, they they finally got there and. Um, you know, uh, I think Portuguese recruit um, got the winner in that one. Um, defender from from memory. Um, we'll check out. We'll check it out. But um, you know, it's for me. You know, this kind of game. You know, I, I know I'm going to call it a Melbourne derby, but it's not the Melbourne derby. That's if, true. if you want to, if you want to call it that. Um, Miranda in the 75th minute got got the winner there. Thoughts on this game, boys? Well, victory has been struggling in the last couple of years. You want to start with a win. Um, <laughs> they've done that. I'm just looking at their team for the for the game and. They don't look like they've got nothing resembling a Melbourne victory team anymore, except for Lee Broxham, who's still playing somewhere. It looks like um, Western Sydney Wanderers slash Perth Glory FC. Yeah, yeah right. and, and and, and Spiranovic and a few Nick others. Nick Agostano, so you know, they've got these players there, so yeah. But that, look, a bit of a mix good up. on them. They got the win to start off with, and they need. They're desperate. Like that's a massive club in Australian football, and and you, you know, to I've hated them, you know, since the beginning. <laughs> but it, it's actually, it's actually. Um, it's not good for the league to have them struggling so bad. So hopefully they're on the up, you know, get the rivalries going again because... It's funny you mentioned that because on, on the on the uh, preview show, we did say that, you know, for the league to be, you know, up there, you need the likes of the Melbourne Victories, the yeah. Sydney FCs, the Western Sydney Wanderers to be performing because, you know, it gives it gives it that feel. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, Broski, if mm-hmm. I can. Uh, the Big Blue or the Sydney Derby? Which one's bigger? Uh, for, me, for me, the Sydney Derby, without a doubt. Um, but for a lot of players, see, I, I um, it's a good question because a lot of fans, a lot of even players, um, the Big Blue is bigger than the Derby. But for me, because I live out here in Western Sydney and, and I, I feel it more than most, um, there's there's no bigger game than than the Derby. Than the Derby. Do you, yeah. Broski, do you think, do you, were you playing with Popper or? None. I mean, I played with him at Sydney when he was, uh, yeah, yeah. When he was a what, player. What, what do you think of him going now to, to the victory we seen we know his record when he when it comes to the clubs. We've seen it with the Wanderers, mm-hmm. even with Perth. I mean, getting the minor premiers with both clubs. Yep. Can he do it with the with the victory with well, the squad they got this season? I think um, I think he can. I, I actually have um, you know think that he will get the premiership this year with a squad that he's got. I, really? I, yeah. Look, I think um, and I know what you're saying that it's not a Melbourne victory team. What it is is a, a Tony Popovich team. Like, yeah, you're right. He's got a lot of players that he tends to sort of. They tend to follow him, and there's a reason why players uh, do that. You know, they 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 know that following a coach like him and what he gets out of the team, um, you know, means they're going to be playing you know finals football come the end of the year. So I think with a the squad they have, plus, I mean, the players he brought in, plus your your Rojas, um, Robbie Cruz, you know, two guys who didn't play much last year, yeah. but on their day, very very good players. Um, yeah, they've revamped the whole the whole team, and and um, look, they needed to. They definitely 100%. needed to. Last year was disgusting. It was disgusting. Yeah, it was hard yep. to watch. It was frustrating because, like you said, you know, you want to, you want, we want the league to do well, and we need Melbourne Victory to be doing well. We need their, their stadium full because it, it better's the league, you know. So I think this year they definitely will be up there. And um, look, Popper being there um, already, you can see the the change. They, they're not. They weren't at their best. I don't think for this one, but. Um, they did enough, they got the win, and, and they will continue to improve. Can, can I ask a different question, obviously, from a player perspective, right? Um, because we touched on on a couple of uh, different episodes of different podcasts, but, you know, new manager comes in, new players. Um, it's, it's not just Melbourne Victory, it's Western Sydney Wanderers, a few other teams. Um, how long does it really take to gel? Like, in terms of getting the players to, you know, we're saying, all right, that's not the Melbourne Victory that, that we that we know, or, and we know they're going to get better, but... By what round do you sort of go? Okay, well, we know this is what we're going to get. To be honest, there's no, there is no time, and it sometimes it can click already in preseason. Sometimes it's um, you know by round one. Sometimes it takes you know up to half a season, which you obviously don't want. But 
Um, look, someone like Popper, he comes in and he has immediate results. So we've seen it when he started the Wanderers. He went to Perth um, and, and he was in the top two in, in both, if not won the premiership in both. So I think whenever yeah, his he... first year, yeah. Grand finals as well. Exactly Things right. So someone like Popper, he gets results straight away. And that's because of how... Um, just how hardcore he is as a coach. You know, he, he changes everything. There, there's nothing that he doesn't look into. Every detail is um, is considered and factored in. Um, and he makes sure that the players, they don't slip up at all, you know, in, t- in every single way. You know, how much yep. they're sleeping, eating, Damn. Um, everything. everything yeah, I've, I've actually got a uh, Tarek Elridge story I bumped into once and um, he actually got weighed once and he was he was <laughs> overweight and he got scalded by um by Popper. So um, definitely, <laughs> you know, definitely exactly what you're saying, Broski. Like, um, but, but you know what? You wouldn't mind that from a, from a manager because he demands that sort of, Perfection. Well, he was like that as a player as well, you know. Like even um, like in his later years, he was I think already thirty six, thirty seven when he came to Sydney, and and um, I was a lot younger than him. But any time we did a running drill, any time we did a, you know, um, something in the gym, he was at the top or he was at the front. So that sort of shows how much uh, you know professionalism he had as a player, and how much he and and that level that he demanded off everyone around him, and that just carries through as a player. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna bring that every single day, then he doesn't want you there. So and Pop and Man United. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He was saying he doesn't let players slip, so maybe Liverpool could have used him a couple of seasons ago. Right, here we go. <laughs> but Butch is on it straight away. He he's <laughs> words slip and and it's on. No, um, but one thing about Popper going there now, like with what what Alex has just said and how he's you know every detail goes goes you know like. There's a focus on absolutely everything. I think the club itself and the players that are already there before Popper, they'd be excited about this now. Like it was such rubbish the last year, the year before. They've just been declining, declining, and now there's there's life, there's life, and and, and the fans, the scum fans over there, no offense, <laughs> uh, like they do deserve, you know, they, they deserve something to cheer about again, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded him actually coming back to the Wanderers, but you know. It's done and dusted now. Um, let's see. Let's see how their season pans out. Um, but you, you're calling for them to finish. Up I th- there? I think they will, yeah. There you go. Um, all right, moving on to uh, Borch's team over here. Yeah, Perth yeah, Glory yeah. won, Adelaide United won. And um, you know what? They, they I'm not going to say conned 17,000 fans, but they <laughs> managed to get them all there to watch Sturridge. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they got, and they got him for five minutes. But Borch, what, what a strike by Fornaroli, mate. I almost forgot about him with this whole Sturridge yeah, yeah, news. It was a great strike, but to be fair, I, I even think we're – we might be lucky to get the draw. Mm. I mean, the first the first opening 10 minutes, they were all over us. It was Adelaide, chance after chance after chance, and they could have been 2-0 up, maybe even 3-0 up at times. Um, but I'm telling you, if it's not for our keeper... Uh, Big um, difference, huh? <laughs> Big difference. You, look, Liam Reddy, Liam Reddy, he's done his time, and he's been a great keeper, not just for Perth, but in the A-League as well. Uh, Tendo Valapi... Uh, <laughs> The early days of, of um, the A League, he was brilliant, but I think we just last year there's just so many errors that kind of didn't didn't make up for the brilliant saves that they made. Like if we had a penalty, ready saving it, like we're guaranteed. You know what I mean? But I think now bringing in um, Brad Jones in, I think some of the saves that he pulled off, in, especially in that in that sec, uh, second half was in that second half. I mean, got us the the one point. Uh, look, Fonaroli, Fonaroli, great goal. He had Andy Keogh maybe to slip him through, but he went himself. The Uruguayan, eh? Maybe, <laughs> maybe deserves a call-up. I know Uruguay's not doing hey, well we in, the, quali- him, in the qualifiers. <laughs> maybe give him a call-up. But, yeah, you're right. With the, the, I think they conned everyone, 17,000 fans. Daniel Sturridge, he only got that last five at the end. Didn't really get into the game that much. But, look, hopefully... Hopefully we see more of him in um, the next the next couple of rounds. I know we got was it ten or nine away games now yep. due Jesus. to the whole quarantine thing that's yeah. happening. Uh, oh, sorry, COVID thing over there in Perth with the lockdowns. Hopefully, hopefully they bounce back from that that one point, and we we need to start getting some some sort of results because it is a little bit worrying for us at, at the moment. We we touched on that in the in the previous show about you know the extended away run, but if you pick up enough results on the road then you come home to a really good you know home run um but I really wanted to touch on a couple of things and and to get perspective from from you Broski in regards to you know Daniel Sturridge he landed couple, you know probably three four weeks ago in Australia spent a couple of weeks in quarantine you know I I probably and mind you I'm not a footballer but I would have suspected that he wasn't going to get much game time and he wasn't going to be playing 
Um, you know, what kind of condition, like he's obviously a really good athlete, played at the highest level, but expected to probably only get those those minutes in his legs? Um, look, I th- given if, I don't know if they played a preseason match before, you know, or how long before they played that game, um, you know, before their f- round one and whether he got any minutes in that. But if that was his first game, then look, I, I would have expected probably even about 10 minutes or so just to, yeah. but look, again, insane. If he's completely underdone, then... You know, there's no point bringing him on. He might, with his history of injuries, um, they, it was probably one of those where they owed it to the crowd to at least give him a few minutes, but they didn't want to take any more chances. And you could see he came on and sort of just cruised around a little yeah. bit. I think I think if they were what two nil up or yes, something, if they, yes. if they were comfortable towards the end of that game with 15 to go, even I think he probably goes on. Yeah, but imagine he scores but in that five minutes. Yeah, like you, you've you, seen it happen before. We've seen. <laughs> Players coming on, first touch to goal, but no, I, I don't think. I, I think losing Diego Castro or a player of that quality, and I, I know we have O'Neill now in, in, in the midfield, but Castro was just linking up play. He would do things, it, uh, even at his age, that a lot of the players in the A-League couldn't do. Yeah, he was class. He, he was a special player, man. That's He's right. synonymous with Perth. I think he will be forever, you know, yeah, as so long mi- as the A-League's around. Not replacing him with the, same type of, with the same type of play, I think, kind of hurts us. And now we maybe got to try... Play a different type of game instead of relying on one player. We need to rely maybe like a whole mm. squad this season to try push for the top six. But we'll see. Look, one point. I, I'm 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 not obviously we're not happy with the one point. But I, I, in terms of how the game panned out, and which I think we should have maybe lost that game. I think Adelaide were very unlucky, v- very unlucky. Very um, unlucky not to get the win there. I think I'll take that one point for this round, man. Western United next for you guys. Um, away. Yeah. How you feeling? Look, you got to go confident into. It into every game I mean uh, they they drop points as well I think we got to we got to get the win it is going to be tough though we we see we we seen the last the last season uh Western United they're that team that just you know the annoying team they just can't get the point off I <laughs> the think. pests yeah they, they, well, that, that the kind of team you know I know they don't got Barisha thank god uh, <laughs> because he's the one that keeps haunting us but um the Diamante is another player there that can um you know yeah. give him one chance one goal and it's all over that's it. It is. Um, let's move on to the uh, the F three derby. Um, Newcastle one, Central Coast two. Um, I don't know. Surprised about this result? Well, Central Coast were pretty good last season, man. They had a strong strong year, and uh, they look to continue it. Um, is this Matt German's first year at the club at, yeah, at Newcastle? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, captain, captain as well. well. Captain. So look, like a changing of the guard. They changed a lot of players though. Exactly. A lot of players. Uh, our lot of players in. So. Look, it's 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 a home loss in a derby. It's always devastating. Um, I'm not surprised by the result, though. To be honest with you, um, yeah. Central Coast, their level has risen, you know, um, and it showed this week. Surprised, Matty Simon didn't get on the score sheet. Mm. Uh, he didn't play because he um, he had a neck injury, I think. A neck um, injury. Too neck, many headers. Neck injury. And Too many headers yeah. in, the, in the, last, <laughs> the last twenty years in the A League. It's the service he was getting from yeah. Broski, you know. But um, <laughs> but I was just because I thought you know no Matty Simon. They sold um, Qual as well. I just thought maybe you know that might upset a little bit you know in, in regards to what they were going to do. But you know it's a first round. Good on them. Um, you know to get to get the result, and I think they'll uh, ho- hopefully kick on because. Um, I think is it Nick Montgomery, the mm-hmm. the manager there now? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, obviously with Stadish moving on, you just didn't know whether how that football was going to continue this season. But um, I don't know, Broski, if you had any insights on that. Um, look, I just, I, you touched on it briefly, just about Monty coming in. I think he's excellent for them. I know Stadge when. You know, when he took over and uh, it took him a little while, but last season they played some good football. I think someone like Monty now taking over, someone who, I mean, he is the Mariners through yeah. and through. You know, the people love him from the area. Um, you know, I think I think he's got good traits as a... He has good enough traits as a player to carry that on as a coach as well. He knew how to read the game well, was a hard player, um, and really sort of typifies that Mariners club, you know. So I think having him in... Uh, will do wonders for those um, for those young players, especially. Um, and look, I, I think I've I may or may not have tipped them to come in the six, but they're thereabouts. Whereas I think the Jets will be around the bottom. But I'll, in saying that, I was surprised by the Jets. I think they, you know, going forward, they got some real surprising good new players that we don't really know much of yet. But um, their touches and movement going forward look good. Um, but again, to lose this game at home shows that the Mariners, you know, for the time being, anyway, are in a you know bit of a Better position than what the Jets are. Yeah. I felt I felt like it took it took the Jets 
going a goal behind to mm. kind of get back into get back it. Then they got another. I think it was it was it was a two 0 at one stage before they got the their their goal. If they just go out now, I don't know. And this is the thing, and we'll touch on a bit with with the Wanderers and the derbies that have been this week. I'm not sure if putting massive derbies on like Sydney FC on the round one, even even the uh, Mariners and Jets in round one, I think. And we've seen that a little bit in the Premier League as well, where you put these big games at the start, you know, the first couple of rounds, and a lot of the players don't want to take that many risks just in case we lose the game. More so, more so, yeah, more so in the Wanderers game that, and Sydney FC that I found that, that was the case. This one, I know they, I know they got their goals, uh, the Mariners, but I just thought if this was to happen in round five, six, maybe seven, where maybe Jets needs to win. Yeah. The way they played when they conceded, they'll play that from the from the kickoff. Mm. Would you agree, Al? I do agree, but in saying that, right, like we do, everyone plays everyone three times, uh, yeah. or, or there, there. I think that it is, yeah, with derbies anyway. There'll always be three derbies for for you know for these types of teams. So, uh, look, I'm not against it, right? Because when you look at round one a couple of years ago, there was that much hype and build up leading into that game, and we got sixty thousand yeah. people, and that was insane. Like that was such a good atmosphere and good build up. Yeah. But then come you know last weekend, we only had. Just over twenty thousand. So, I, I get we, we do still have two more games to go. You yeah, know? yeah. So I think I think we will see, and it might be in a couple of weeks. When's the next uh, next derby? Oh, we'll, we'll look into that. It's probably still this year. I eh? think. Well, it would have to be because I know that up until December, they, they're still only playing um, New South Wales teams are playing New South Wales teams. Are, well, they're keeping it to this side because of COVID. So we might have a derby pretty uh, pretty soon anyway. But um, look, I think. I think that if it's marketed well and done well, I, I think th- what stopped this game from being as big as it could have been, um, the Sydney derby, was probably just that hang hangover of du- of COVID. Still, you know, a lot of people probably yeah, still people were a little bit scared. To, yeah, you know, we've been. But that, that even even taking that in consideration, they could have been like, these are the games we want people to go to. Let's mm. give it a bit more time. Yeah. Now we yeah. know with the with the, you know the whole after December a certain amount. You know the non after the fifteenth, whatever the fifteenth. You could have you could have done it then, where mm. anyone can come to the ground. Now they could have maybe yeah. pushed that pushed That's a, true. That's a, true. A, a bit forward, and then you get the then you, you kind of get the gist where everyone kind of is in terms of maybe Sydney FC's top three, maybe maybe they're one and two, and they they're actually now playing for something, taking uh, it, um, taking a bit more risks. Like we like I said with the Jets, if they play like that, like in the second half after they conceded the goals, they could probably. Get their goal early, uh, early in the first half, and then who knows what happens from there for them. Yeah, but especially bro, like, like we've t- I've, I've tipped them to be in the dead set, like bottom half. Mm. You yeah, know, like no, with no hope, with no hope, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, so it's I don't a know, tough I, one. Yeah, like like Broski was saying, I just think the way. I just don't think they have the team to go the whole way. That like the whole season, yeah, like yeah. they might start off well, but they might fall off depending on injuries, depending on just fatigue. Um, so we'll we'll see how that pans out, but um. There was a bit of a double header because of a, of um, a situation out at Campbelltown Stadium. Uh, council's got no grass, couldn't afford any. It feels like I was it was Whitland Park all over again oh, at Sporting mate. Rovers. Um, I don't know how that happens. Um, you know, in a, in a professional league um, in a country like ours, that you know, two or three days before the game, they they move the game to to Newcastle. I mean. As a, as a professional athlete, what what goes through your head when when you sort of get that message? It was embarrassing seeing that. I mean, Macarthur came out saying that they only found out about it a couple of days. I mean, how is no one from the club going to <laughs> go, check go to how, the park. This, how the how the ground looks? You know, I'm I'm out at Whitlam at least two three times a week, so I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah, maybe uh, they need someone in that role, Kev. You know, p- no, put mate, your resume for them. Grass keeper. Keep <laughs> Yeah, no, just embarrassing <laughs> keep as a whole. I mean, they've had how many months to uh, to get this pitch up to scratch? <laughs> no one's been playing on it. Um, from a from a stadium point of view, embarrassing. From a club point of view, equally as embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And, and what they're going to miss a few games now. They can't play there for a while. Yeah, that's and <laughs> that's and incredible. and you know what's even funnier? Like Wellington are based out of Wollongong. Like. Mm. You couldn't move the game. Could have went yeah. that way. Like yeah. you know, give them. I mean, you know, you can reverse the fixture later, but. <laughs> Give them the home game if yeah. If, yeah. if you want to call well, it a home make game. Them travel. Make them travel. The make way make them go side. another another hour further. But uh, you know, um, you know, let's let's put that aside for now because you know it's got its issues and they'll solve that. But <laughs> the 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 match itself, um, 
one all. Um, Wellington, I think it was a penalty from memory. Yeah, um, it was. That, that Wellington it was, was yeah, received, yeah. Um, and then you know back end Macarthur sort of came strong and and got you know got their goal. Lockie Rose from from memory. Yep. Um, you know, sort of one all. What do we think, G- uh, gents? You know, I've I've tipped Wellington sort of come last or second last, and I've got Macarthur in my six based on their recruitment. Um, did they miss Tommy Urich? You know. And and obviously they lost Derbyshire from from last year. Did they miss that out and out striker? Yeah, look, um, Tommy Urich is is a good A League striker, and you're going to miss someone like that. He's, you know, they recruited obviously pretty strong. Um, I would say that with this game, a big part of it was the you know the changes before you know the mixes up and and, and the moving around. Like it's, I reckon it would have affected the players a little bit. Um, I I don't know. I don't think Wellington's as bad as uh, as you boys were saying. Myself, I got I must have got that one wrong. You know what I mean? Because the consensus is uh, pretty, pretty. Um, there, there's another answer. opinion at the table. We don't know. Yeah, no, I've actually got them to make the six this year. I there think, you go. Um, and, and look, not based entirely on the squad. I think it's um, it is a good squad, but losing someone like De Villa would not would hurt them. But in saying that, um, I, for me, it's more about Ufuk Tale and what he's done there. So De Villa came in. You know, two seasons ago, we didn't know him. We didn't expect much of him. Um, and he, I think he went close, if not equally won the uh, Player of the Year. Um, not last year, maybe last year, the year before. So, yeah. you know, under Uffi, he sort of come out and, and become this player that we're all talking about now. So, uh, and Tom Ahmed is the same one. So he he came here, no one expected much, and he did exceptionally well. So I think Uffi, the way he gets his teams playing, I think um, regardless of who comes in and out, um, I think they'll be up there again. What did you think of the result itself? Um, look, I think MacArthur definitely dominated, um, you know, most of the game. Wellington had some good chances, though. Um, and, look, given MacArthur's squad, um, you expected that, you know. I think they've got a very, very good team with um, Danny De Silva, um, Davila playing together. That That's, a, I mean, frightening duo if they can really get going, those two. With Tommy Urich, someone, you know, I, th- I do think they need a target man. Um, yep. So I think someone, when you got guys like Danny De Silva and Davila playing behind him, yeah. you need someone, because there was a lot of crosses getting into the box and then there was no one on the end of it, you know. And um, you know, Rose, he, he's, a, he's a young kid, but he's also not much of a presence. So I think he's someone still in his young days to bring off the bench, um, you know, yeah. let Tommy Urich do the hard, the hard work, the dirty work, and um, try and get your goals um, the, the type of goal that he gets, you know, those poachers' goals, those number yep. nine finishes. Um, but, yeah, so I think he was missed. Uh, but otherwise, I thought MacArthur looked quite good. Yeah, I mean, um, I sort of saw the same during the game and same about Lockie. I think he's just going to he, – he'll grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. And especially learning from somebody like Tommy, um, it'll all come together pretty well. But, um, you know, you know, the reason why we're here, boys, is, is the big one, the Sydney derby. We haven't touched on it. It's the last one. Now, um, Borcha and I got out there in and amongst the crowd on Saturday and uh, we got some pre-game footage, some predictions, the thoughts from the fans, a little bit of um, inside footage on the march from the RBB. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to let you have a look at that right now. So um, check it out and we'll be back very shortly. Guys, KG here from the Football Capital. We're live at Prince Alfred Park. The march is coming down. Season 10, we've kicked off. The boys are hungry, the boys are ready, the RBB is here and we're taking over Sydney. Sydney will be red and black, just listen to that. Prince Alfred Park in anticipation for the march before the game. We've got uh, Jakob here, um, a wondrous prospect as well. So it's it's good to get his thoughts on what's about to happen. Uh, dude, how excited are you for the game? I'm um, very excited. Looking for a win today. And yeah, that's about it. The, I can see all the boys here. They're all just sort of watching you. Um, you. You're getting ready for you're getting ready for your uh, media press conferences for when you become you know you know first team. But um, just want to know you know I guess the the G up for the day. What's the biggest thing that you're looking for out of today's game? Just heart, hunger, heart. You know, just to get the win. Get 
and the RBB to get the boys over the line, you know what I mean? It feels like there's a lot of um, hype around, you know, the, the fans this year and, and I don't know if you caught that caught an episode of RBTV with Reese Williams. He spoke very highly of the fans. Um, what do you think of today's turnout from, from the fans and what do you think are we gonna get them over the line? Look, honestly, yeah, I think so because it's a ten year anniversary. The boys will be Jade, will be Jade. Should be a good Are you Jade though? Because send Jade. Mind your fucking boys are we Jade! Hey, Jakob, Jakob, just lastly, man, just lastly, uh, what's your prediction for today? 2-1. Uh, 2-1. 3-0. Petrados double. Petrados double. You got. You heard it here first. Uh, Jakob, thanks for your time, man. All the best. Hopefully we see you in the first team soon, man. Cheers. Thanks. Justin, man, um, I heard you're from the other side of town, yeah? Or well, you're supporting the boys from the other side of town. Is that right? No, nah, no way, man. Denial. I love it. Um, <laughs> Bit of a G up for today's uh, derby. You know, are you are you anticipating something big for tonight? Because the crowd is certainly coming into Prince Alfred Park. Yeah, I think our uh, first game of the season. I think everyone's G'd up, fired up. Let's fucking do it tonight, boys. He's fucking. He's G'd up. He's G'd up. All right. Well, let's let's get into a little bit of, of the vibe. What do you think is going to happen in the game? How do you think it's going to turn out? I think the new squad's going to show some heart tonight. I think the manager's preparing for a big season, and what a way to start off than a derby. And then, what's your prediction for tonight? 3-1. 3-1, one. One, I like it. Okay, okay, you know, you're not off the hook. Couple of things, I want some goal scorers and your man of the match. I think Antonis is going to have a big one tonight and I think Hamid, Hamid or Petrados get on the score sheet. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and who's who's the man of the match? Who's the one that's going to carry this team through? Ninkovic. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Um, Reese Williams at the back, solid bro. Captain. That was a good assist but at the back there, Reese Williams. Boys, enjoy the game, get rowdy, all right? Let's fire up. Outside Combank Stadium in preparation for the Sydney Derby. We've got a few fans here. It's a good split by the looks of things. Um, guys, just wanted to get into the Derby. What do you think today means for both teams? We'll start. We'll go red into blue. What do you guys think about today's game? Oh, I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be a good start to the season. Um, I, I mean, it's so important for both teams, I guess, to get a really good start to the season because it will determine whether or not and where they're basically positioned going into you know, the next couple of weeks and it's, it's really good to get a really good start for both of them. It's going to be important to get a good start so I'm, I'm guessing we're, you know, we're bleeding red and black over here so what do we think in terms of a prediction? Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be a physical game, could be a bit rusty first game of the season so I'm, I'm going to say a draw but I'm, going, I'm hoping for a win. Draw, hoping for a win. That's probably the, the Western Sydney uh, mantra at the moment. Um, we'll, we'll head over to the blue side over here. They're smiling, so they look a little bit more confident. Um, boys, similar, like what does this game mean to Sydney FC? And, and I know that you guys had the last win in the last derby. Are you going to continue momentum? Uh, I hope so. I mean, it's a big one, especially for Sydney FC like, as a club and as a collective. So, But I hope we do get the win out there. And, and obviously disappointed about the grand final loss uh, last season. How, do we continue to pick up on, on the form from last year? Do you guys make another grand final? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely making another grand final. I mean, new season, new players, Ninkovic is back. Unbelievable. Uh, so definitely grand final. Put your money on it here. You heard it here first. Sydney FC champions. Sydney FC champions. Um, Ninkovic, you know, seems like the troublemaker. <laughs> We've got some content there, but just from a Sydney FC perspective, uh, prediction for tonight's score. Oh, I reckon 3-1 uh, Sydney FC. 3-1. 5-0. 5 nil. Five nil. okay. There's a couple of goal scorers, couple of goal scorers there. Who are they going to beat? Oh, definitely Ninkovic one. Um, hoping maybe Cam Sover gets some time on the board early. 
Um, and yeah. Cam Sober seems to be one. Who's the goal scorer for the Wanderers? Who sort of gets us across the line and, and get a result tonight? I reckon the new striker. Uh, is it Hemet? Hemet. Hemet. Yep. I reckon he'll yeah he'll get one at least. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a tough one. Look, my prediction. I'm going with nil all. Oh. Nil all. Reese Williams will be happy about the clean sheet. I don't know about the strikers. Or maybe Reese Williams scores. Who knows? Well, you know, hopefully for the Wanderers, Reese Williams. Hopefully we avoid we get a clean sheet, but avoid a nil all draw. Boys, enjoy the game. Um, have yourselves uh, a lot of fun. And from me, go the West Sydney Wanderers. But um, let's see if the battle for Sydney. All right. Have a good one. All right, we're here, we're here with some Sydney FC fellas. Uh, boys, just want to know, what's the score going to be tonight? 3-1 Sydney FC. 3-1 Sydney FC. Okay, and who's going to score for Sydney FC? Ninkovic, Lafondra, and Viper. Wow, that's a big lineup. Who's your man of the match? Brent. Ninkovic. Ninkovic. How about yourself? Who do you think is going to score today? Uh, I reckon it's going to be 2-1 Sydney. Uh, and who, who do you think will score for Sydney FC? Batten and Ninkovic. Oh. Hey, everyone's loving Ninkovic, hey? Everyone's loving Ninkovic. How about yourself, young fella? Um, come, come through, come yeah, through. I, think, I think it'll be 3-1 to Sydney. Wow, okay. Um, I think Ninkovic will get two and Bobo. Ninkovic double and Bobo. And who's your man of the match? Grant. Grant, hey. There's some Sydney FC predictions here. Thanks, fellas. Enjoy the game. Cheers. 3-1 to the Wanderers. 3-1. Who's going to score? Ah... Uh, Rodwell, if he's not injured. Rodwell, if he's not injured. <laughs> All the best. Cheers, bud. Hey, champion. Can I just can I just get a score prediction from you tonight? Yeah. What's the score going to be tonight? Two 0 for us. Two 0 for Sydney FC. And uh, who are your goal scorers for tonight? Man, um, I gotta say one for Bobby. I know okay. He, yeah. Yeah, and then. One for Grant. One for Grant. Grant's gonna bomb on, eh? Yes. All right. All the best, man. Okay. Cheers. Good luck. No problem. We've got the boys here, a couple of Wanderers fans. Um, boys, let's let's ha have a bit of a chat about the game. How G'd up are you for today? I'm very G'd up. It's Hopefully been. Alex gets a few minutes in. I'd love to see, uh, yeah, yeah, off the bench. Hopefully hat trick from Alex off the bench. Uh, you must be you must be a massive fan. I'm glad I'm moving. You're, you're that. Yeah, I want it, I want Jack Rodwell as well. Yeah, Big Jack fan. Rodwell. Okay, so you boys are keen, huh? Like, you, you guys know the players, you know how it's all pending. Long time, very long time. Yeah, Finally allowed Missed back. it, yeah. That's good, yeah. Finally, we're back in the stadiums, everything's... Go to the RBB, apparently. Um, but boys, like, obviously, new team. Um, the coach might tweak the formation. How do we see today's game playing out? Uh, well, I see being the home... Home game for the Wanderers. I see them dominating most of the possession, and usually Sydney FC. They, I say, think they'll stick with what they've trusted their four triple two, and I think that Wanderers will dominate the ball. Obviously, and Sydney FC will be dangerous on the counter attack. Mate, you, you've you've read my mind. How about yourself? We have the tools to win this game. It's just if the boys are hungry enough for it. That's all it is. That's all. That's all. How it's always is during a derby. Passion, desire, all those types of things. Who's the standout player for you today in in the Wanderers squad? I don't know. I'm keen to see like. Arcolino, if he plays, I'm keen for that. But what about yourself, Rodwell? Rodwell, don't don't know if he's playing, but you know he's he's not. You know, I don't know if he's the guy. But how about yourself? Who's who's the guy that's going to change today's game? Who's going to flip it on his head? Well, personally, in derbies, I don't think it's a single player. It's it's a whole team effort. You know, if they can if they can manage something, it'll be. Hey, but Trey, all right, I think. Spoken like a true professional. Lastly, I just want your predictions. 2-1 to the Wanderers. Ah, three new Wanderers. Two new Wanderers. A lot of goals there. One goal scorer each. Uh, Bacchus. Trey Ore. Margush. Margush? Mar Mar a goal scorer. Mate, he's going to have to take a penalty down the other end. Boys, thanks for your time. Enjoy the game. And um, all the best to West Sydney Wanderers. Cheers, boys. Thanks. Here before the game starts, wanted to know from a Western Sydney Wanderers fan, what's the score going to be tonight? I'm um, hoping anything, anything over three will be really good. Anything over three? How about, how about yourself? Three to one, bet. Yeah, nice. How about yourself? Yeah, we want to win. Okay, well, who's going to score the goals tonight? Who's going to score? Probably the our wings, wings mostly. Our wingers? Yeah, your our wingers. Okay, and who's the man of the match tonight? Who's going to who's going to change the game? 
Probably the attacking. Someone up and attacking. Yeah, the attacking, the attacking team from Western Sydney Wanderers tonight. They're going to get the job done. Thanks, guys, for your predictions. 2-1, Two, Sydney FC. All right, who's going to score? Um, Grant. 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 Yeah. Who's going to score? What's the score going to be? 2-0, Sydney. Okay, and who's going to score? Bobo. Bobo for the double, maybe. Okay, let's see how that goes. And we're here again, Football Capital. We're getting some predictions. There's, there's a split here in Sydney. There's a split in Sydney already. I'm going to ask you first, what's your prediction for tonight? 3-1 uh, Wanderers, Petrados double. Petrados up straight off the bat. Petrados double. I love it. Other side of Sydney. I'm going to say 2-0, the Fonda and Bahaja, one each. Wow, look at that. So it's, it's a two-goal margin tonight. Just your man of the match. Uh, Demi Petrados. Demi and? Ninkovic, all day. Ninkovic. Demi, hey, it's the battle. Demi, Ninkovic. Boys, enjoy the game. Cheers. Thanks. Just going to get some predictions from the fans outside of Combank. We'll see what we can get from everybody as they walk into the stadium. It's going to build up a little bit now. We'll see if we can get some predictions. Fellas, some predictions for tonight. Goal scorers, scores. 1-0, uh, Wanderers. 1-0, and who's going to score? Fucking Jack Rodwell off the bench. Jack Rodwell off the bench. <laughs> Dimitratos, double. Double. 2-0. 2 0 3 1. Dimitratos. 3 1. We've got a 3 1. Dimi Petratos double. Who's gonna who's gonna win tonight? What's the score? Wanderers. Wanderers, who, who's gonna score for the Wanderers? What's the score? Hamed. Hamed? Okay, Hamed's gonna get one. 2 0. We got a 2 0 there. 2 0 Borch. Champion, how are you? What's the score gonna be tonight? Football yeah, Capital, yeah, correct. Football yeah, there you go. Hey, we got a follower. Um, what's the score going to be tonight? I'm going to go two all draw. Nah, man, you can't wear a jersey like that. All right, all right, all right. Hey, what, who the goal scorer is going to be? Uh, look, Bernie. I'm going to go Bernie. Um, Lafondra. And I'm not sure on the other two. I don't know. I don't hopefully, 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 Put your jacket back on. hopefully, Bernie double. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, we're outside. Tom Bank Stadium. I'm here with Kev. Hey, look who I found. Hey, Kev. <laughs> Kev. The, we've got the boys in the back. Oh no! The boys are here. The boys are here. The boys are here. <laughs> the boys are here. <laughs> but Kev, this Yo. is. Before we go in, quick prediction for the game. Quick one. Yeah, man. Look, the crowd's coming in. I'm sort of getting a little bit pumped. So originally I was sort of leaning towards Sydney FC, but hey, we bleed red and black. Three one with Sydney Wanderers. Hamed double Petratos to finish them off. There you go, guys. There you go. We all know this is just a pre-drinks. We know the Perth Glory game is where it's at, yeah? That's where that's where the dancing happens. Boys, um, some good footage there, obviously from outside the stadium. Um, everyone was G'd up for a really big match. Some big uh, scoring predictions as well and, and a lot of hype around some of the individual players, you know, the Ninkoviches, the Petratoses, the, the Hemeds, they were all mentioned in those in that video and the lead up and you could see there was a lot of hype around the stadium, as you would in a, in a Sydney derby. Um, but let's get, go into the game, you know, um, we, were, we were there watching and... A stalemate. We sort of spoke about this earlier in the episode around, you know, maybe the teams being a derby round one were a little bit cagey. Uh, what do we think of the actual performances from each team? Man, stalemate is the perfect uh, perfect description for that game. Um, Wanderers have a lot of new changes. Um, they're going to take some time to to get to gel properly, but I think this is the strongest team they've had in a long time, a long, long time, and. Um, it's pretty crazy saying that because the derbies themselves have shifted like all the powers in Sydney's hands for the longest time. 
You know, there was the, the countdown of, of how long it's been since they'd won a game and the days since they'd won. Did you use countdown? <laughs> we used to look at the tifos and laugh every week. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, looking at the game and, and obviously, you know, um, there was it was really weird actually the last couple of years where Western Sydney probably didn't have the best results in terms of where they finished on the ladder, but they seemed to be getting the results in the derby. Um, but I myself, as a Western Sydney Wanderers fan, would always go into a derby going, I don't know what the hell is going to happen because our team is not as strong. You look at on paper, you're like, that's a pretty impressive team that Sydney FC boasts. And, and, and they have for, for as long as I can remember. Um, but I actually looked at our lineup this time and I'm like, you know what? I, yeah. think, I think we've actually got a team that on paper, they match each other. And you're like, okay, well, this is going to be really exciting. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, uh, actually, do you want to go first? No, I... go, go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think as well, Sydney were weekend without Bobo, without Bratton and Barbarossa. So I think there's still a lot more to come from them. But um, you're right. I think on paper going into that match, it was it was as evenly matched as it has been in a while. But, um, Seba, you talked about like, that run that Sydney had. To be fair, that sort of turned for a little while. There were a couple of years there where... We just couldn't win one, and yeah. um, you know it was surprising. But given the Wanderers' uh, position compared to ours in the last couple of years, but then we won the last one, and I thought, um, yeah, heading into this one, I thought there was just going to be a lot more than what we saw all round. You know, it was um, just uh, it was we, we touched on the Mariners and, and Newcastle derby. That felt more like a derby. There were players coming together. There were big tackles. I know the conditions sort of suited it as well, but um, it had more of a derby feel than this one, and that was surprising to me, you know, very, very surprising. I, this game has been the biggest game on the calendar for for years. It used to be a guaranteed sellout, sure. um, and for whatever reason, um, you know... I think the game could do with a couple of villains as well. Like, I yeah. look at that Wanderers team, and I think they're all just... Nice guys, you know. Get, Jor- Jors- get Georgeski them, back, man. Best out, Barisha. Barisha to the Wanderers. You know? Best out to the Wanderers. You're right, though. That, that's a, you're spot on. There's less, maybe a lot of, again, the new players coming from overseas and stuff, they don't know the history as much in the game. But you're, like no one was out there that you know Bratton, Bratton, like you said off camera was was yes. definitely missing, right? There was no one throwing snakes at Yenidovich's goal. Yeah, like, that <laughs> yeah. was you know that was that was. But that's the kind of stuff that you you want at, that. A, at a derby. He, you're like Yenidovich loved it. You yeah. can see his face; he loved it. You, you get into it. Did. Even the foreigners um, from back then, like I know you're saying that the foreigners don't really know the game yet. When when it came, like the build up would have been the same. It's just that in like years ago when we played in a derby, there was that that hatred. You the could hate, feel it, yeah. right? And any tackle, and then, and the foreigners they felt it, and they yeah. wanted to get involved. You know, like you had guys like Saba flying in yes. tackles yeah. and getting Red sent cards. off. Um, yeah. Nikola Petkovic for us as well. Mm. Um, they that. they felt it. The whole centre lab Ali Abbas. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Whereas it, it that seems to have been lost. Um, Kareem recently. Bullet speaks yeah. for himself. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> He'll J up any any crowd, Absolutely. any team. But that's what I think you he's want, still celebrating yeah? that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Broski, you were just you were just saying with the whole villain things. I think you mentioned off camera too about Reese Williams making a tackle, was mm-hmm. it on the 50, 55th minute yeah, or something, something around like then? That. You're saying something like that should be, you know, early doors, first five minutes, just get in there, get stuck in. Exactly right. Like we, we saw Robbie Cornthwaite do it, I think, in the the, the final, wasn't it? Um Oh, no, no, this was like when, when Sydney oh, played yeah, yeah, yeah. Sydney in a Sydney derby, a couple of minutes in. So someone, even like Robbie Cornthwaite, he knew first tackle, it's got to be a big one. I'm cleaning up whoever yeah. it is. Mm. And Reese Williams ta- tackle on Lafondre in, in that second half. Like That was a big tackle, he big derby him, tackle. He went yeah, through him, right? Through. But that should have happened in the second yeah. minute, third minute. You know? Set the tone, set the tone. Set the tone for the match. Have you got his number? Maybe send him a text or I something. Sorry before the game, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to give him any advice. <laughs> I, want, I want him to lose. Own goals, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, like make the. Like I think if you set the tone for the game, the the opponents kind of show a, a respect and fear in a way because like, oh shit, these guys are doing this. Plus the crowd, the and crowd the cr- like exactly. they see a tackle like get that and it, they yeah. get into it. You know, like on the way home, I was talking to my missus about it, and she's like. You know, that, that's the thing that she didn't like about the derby because she always used to get worried. She's like, I didn't want you to get hurt. I didn't want you tackling anyone. She goes, but I get what you say. Like, I was sitting there and I didn't really feel anything. You know, I didn't yeah. feel, I didn't see a bad tackle and that made me get up off my couch and yeah. say, you know, scream something at the TV. And I think the crowd responds to that as well. Yeah. And the home team needs to do that because it's, it's all their fans there. Exactly. And, yeah. and you felt it. Like, being an away player at a derby, like, when you, you can feel 
things change when the crowd is sensing something, 100%, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. When the crowd lifts and 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 their team is doing something like it, whether it's a tackle, whether it's a chance or a goal, and mm. you feel you can feel, especially like in old the old Parramatta Stadium. It was nuts the atmosphere, yeah. you know? But even still now in Bank West, it is like you, you, you get it. You get to take a throw in. The guy's breathing down your yeah. neck. <laughs> That's what <laughs> you want. Throwing a beer at you. Throwing the Steve <laughs> warming up behind the goal with all the ones yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yelling all sorts of. Things. But that, but that's the thing. That, like for me personally, this was my first Sydney derby that I've actually been to on the weekend. Uh, so i would never been to a derby where we had the full crowds, full mm-hmm. capacities, especially where where they even had to move it to A and Z mm-hmm. because they they know they were going to pack out seventy thousand yeah. or whatever it might have been. Um, and I just think the, the the sets of fans, the Cove, the RBB, these are these are the clubs, either the fan base, they're going to set the tone for the rest of the season with the Wanderers, especially that it's their tenth uh, tenth season in uh, in the A League, yeah. and they're gonna and, and what I've seen, look, you need that atmosphere, and like you were saying, you, one tackle sparks <laughs> yeah. every not just not just the Cove and the RBB, but the rest of the bays as well yeah. gets everyone rocking. And I think. Um, a bit more of that. A bit, a bit more of that. Can, in, I, can in I just say, is, there's only a couple of teams in the league that can harness and use the crowd, and that is the Wanderers. It is mm-hmm. Sydney FC. It is Melbourne Victory. Yep. And like, I just want to recall a memory that I had from actually a grand final. You, you played in in Melbourne at uh, against Melbourne Victory, and you, you actually lost that game. And rub, I it, would, rub it in. Oh no! But I, I just want to say, yeah, yeah. I can oh, tell I know you where he's going. I know yeah, exactly. I know, he knows what he's going to say. Is the crowd in that day? I'm pretty sure were as big a factor as Melbourne Victory themselves mm-hmm. in defeating Sydney FC. Yeah. Like. It, it was just different. You could it was you could cut through it, man. Like like these teams need to know how to get their get their fans behind them in such a way where where they do help them get over the line, and that could have been the difference in a, in a nil nil derby. And you, you've seen it before. Like I remember season one, like being part of the RBB. We went to Central Coast. I think um, later on in the season, we took five thousand or six thousand people up there, and and that was the game that pretty much clinched the uh, the minor premier. premiership for us. Yeah. Halidi scoring the goal yeah. in the rain, and you I think Matty Ryan goal. missed. Missed you guys the missed the goal. Yeah, well, you're doing yeah, too the, busy the doing the Poznan. We're well, doing the Poznan. Um, Unbelievable. But but you know you're right. Like the crowd. The worst the wonders, but I, I actually remember the RBB getting criticised in year one for not singing the national anthem at the grand final, clearly because we couldn't hear it. We literally did not hear <laughs> the the anthem go on because we were too busy chanting, singing, doing all that kind of stuff. And I remember going to work a couple of days later because I was on a bender. But like I, they, they were like, "Oh, how dis- disrespectful!" I said, "Mate, I didn't even hear it." Over, Ma- meanwhile, over. meanwhile, the the Mariner supporters are playing their trumpets on the other end. Yeah, <laughs> What's but going like, on here, musical chairs. I just I just think <laughs> the crowds are so important. I know that there's been yeah. a lot of um, yeah. you know conversation around you know bands and this and that around even not just. RBB, but even um, the North Terrace um, in, Melbourne in, Victory. in Melbourne Victory, like it's it's just one of those things. And the power of the crowd. I think your position probably close to the Cove um, on Saturday night. Yep, that right? yep, yeah, I was right near the Cove. Yeah. They, they were going off yeah. in periods, and, yeah. I, and I just thought, oh, this has a little bit of that old school feel. Mm. Haven't had that in the last couple of years, but yeah. it did feel like you know what, the RBB were on song, the Cove were on song. This is a derby. It was just missing the tackle. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but you know what? But like. Like like Alex said before, like it was a sellout. This You're game was a, a this game was a sellout though. It used to be a sellout yeah. in the previous years. Mm. Sixty thousand at ANZ, man. That's that's not that far away from Parramatta Stadium. Yeah, I understand COVID changes things, but like you want to get those sellout games again. Yeah. We need we, the, the league needs that. You know, it's, yeah, it was it's, look it's vital. It, the game was definitely missing a goal. If they, um, I mean, if they got your the Wanderers' new keeper, that save he pulled yeah. off. I think it was Lafondra mm. that save he pulled pulled off mm. in the first half. Unbelievable there as well. Even uh, Johnny Contrimbus making the tackle. That's right. Um, yeah. When that when they got through, I was like, wow. And the Reese Williams one we, that you mentioned, yeah. um, and then you know Rodwell pulls off that that yeah. shot from outside yeah. the box that could have changed the game. And then then the, from the corner, it dribbles off his nose, and, yeah. he, and, he, yeah. and he doesn't quite get a touch. But to look it. On, on terms with the Wanderers and, and their players this season. I mean, your back line with the goalkeeper, they're going to be a hard to break down. If they can just get Petrados uh, up front, maybe Bernie, um, Hamed, get, get the front players going, they're going to be dangerous as well. And definitely, I, I see them up there, you know, definitely in the top four this season for me. But their defence, what I see in, on, on the weekend, I mean, Ninkovic, at times you thought, is he even playing at times? And this is, this is the guy that's got, uh, meant to be the biggest threat. Lafondra as well struggled at times. Very hard to break the Wanderers down this season. And if they keep it up, I mean, we talk about... How long do teams uh, take the gel? That back line for me, who, who was playing next to him? Katrumbus? Katrumbus, uh, centre-back, and then they had uh, Traore and... Um, 
what they've been together for maybe like was that four, three, four months in preseason, and I mean I think that back line's he, he pretty ke- solid. He's essentially kept Ziggy Gordon out of the squad. Yeah, he um, wasn't even on. The, he wasn't on the even, even on the yeah, team yeah, sheet. Yeah. So you're like, and Ziggy for. In my perspective, was one of our better wanderers last I mean, year. Broski like, would have found a way. I mean, yeah, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we, we don't want him to. Oh, well, <laughs> depends who, who you're reckon. talking to. But um, I, I guess if we could just touch on um, both teams for a second, uh, Broski, want to get your thoughts? Um, you know, if we're looking at the player turnover, because there seems to be a lot of it in the A League. Um, but if we can talk about for each team, who's probably the biggest loss for each team, and and who's probably one player that's going to stand out for each team this season. Um, look, I, I don't. I mean, Sydney haven't changed much, you know, and, and they were criticised for it, um, you know, for not really recruiting. When you look at everyone else, Melbourne Victory, Wanderers, City, everyone else, see, MacArthur, everyone else seems to have recruited quite heavily, and Sydney didn't. To be honest, there's no one when you look at any other squad that I would probably that I would replace um, for any Sydney mm-hmm. FC play. I think Sydney's starting eleven is as good as anyone's in the competition. So. What they needed to do was just bring a couple of players that they could rely on off the bench. I think Luke Ivanovic had a few chances last year and never really sort of took that opportunity to become a, a real threat off the bench. Um, someone like Maxi Burgess can, I think. Um, he's a great player. Um, Cam Sober we saw on the weekend. He was probably the one guy moving around in that front three that looked like doing something. So I think uh, when Bobo Barbarous has come back, you know, the threat he can give off the um, off the bench as well. Um that's about it. I, I think Sydney, it'll, it'll just be more of the same from them. You know, they're solid, they're, um, um, and they don't need to change much. So I think they'll be uh, a threat again. Do you think, uh, Broski, do you think that because they haven't had that much, not so much recruitment, but changes within the squad over the last maybe three years, you can say, that there's a chance of a burnout towards the end of the season? Um, look, I don't think so. And I know a lot has been spoken even about the, the age of the squad, you know, but yeah. that's something that, um, that's, that, that's been happening for the last five, six years. Even when Arnie was there, people were looking at our squad and saying, you know, you've got older players. But, um, you know, I guess you need those old heads and those experienced yeah. heads to win you to win you things. You know, you need a couple of young players to come through and, and give a bit of something different and, and that youthful en- energy. But you need old heads to win to win championships. Could be a positive as well, right? I think I it mean, will be, yeah. I we talk about be. other teams, how long does it take for them to gel? Yeah. And you've got these teams playing for yeah. a couple but of seasons now. That, that's the uh, to me they're the best run club in the country like uh, as far as the squad goes you can't be making all these changes every year and and if you think about the A-League and the greatest players that have played it like they tend to be an older kind of player as well you yeah. know and, 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 and Sydney Sydney's quality to me they're not they're not matched quite yet um, and when they have Bobo back one of the older players, bro. He's a gold machine. I tipped him for uh, <laughs> Golden Boot this he'll year. He'll probably so get it, man. He'll probably get it. You, know, you just never know, right? Well, Fondra. All of, he'll, yeah. be in, he'll be in Sky Blue, whoever gets that. that <laughs> but, um, um, so as a fan, though, um, same sort of question, you know, from who you lost and potentially who you've gained, similar sort of thoughts? I don't think they're as strong as they have been in the past couple of years, but I think that they're strong, stronger than nine, all the teams. Reg- like all the teams. So at, at, full, at a full-strength squad, they'll beat Melbourne City. They'll rectify that, that loss last season, I believe. Mm, okay. um, just because of the experience and... and like I mean, Alex, you would know. Like they're a unit. That that club is is to me different. They seem different. The the players they're like family. Like they've been around each other for so long, and they just know how they play. And Ninkovic maybe was quiet this game, but that guy is the best number ten in the league by by a mile. It's not close. And 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 his him feeding Barbarusis, feeding you know Bobo and and the rest of them. Like they they're, they're comfortable. I'm not worried. I think that they they'll be fine. Yeah. And and looking to the west, um, s- same question. Uh, a lot more turnover, obviously, with Western Sydney Wanderers. Carl Robinson's second season um, got a lot of criticism last year because of we we thought that you know especially as Wanderers fans they had a really good side, mm-hmm. but it looks like they've they've improved even more. And and his mantra was sort of re- let's start recruiting players that represent the area because they're yep. they're from the area. Um, similar sort of thing. Who do you think is is a big loss for us um, as as a Wanderers um, fan and? Um, who's who's our biggest gain? I think Reese Williams. Um, there's probably a couple. I think someone like Tom Ahmed um, in the front line because you guys have have lacked that real uh, like a. 
proper goal scorer um, for a few seasons now, and he's someone who can get goals with good service. And you've got Petrados, Bernie Abini there who can provide that. As long as they do that and do their bit, he'll score goals. So I think that's a massive, massive um, recruitment for you. And then Reese Williams at the back. I mean, there were times where sort of Cam Sober, Lafondra were sort of were running at him. And it looked like there could be a chance. And to a lesser defender, they would have created something and had and got a shot off. But with him there and, and just his ability to read and send players in certain directions um, and not let them get shots off and even block tackles, um, he sort of just made that threat go away without even, like, I guess it's something that as a player you sort of realise. You, you sort of look at what you would do there and see players that would normally sort of do a certain thing. Cam Sober, very good dribbler. And he wasn't allowed to do what he normally did. So Reese Williams, he's um, he's a massive, massive buy in terms of you know stopping, obviously got conceding goals because his organisation, his um, his presence as well, the tackle he made, even though it was um, long overdue, it's one that he'll make all the time. Yeah. And when yep. he needs, when he sees the team sort of a bit flat and needs something, he'll 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 make a tackle to get them going. And and someone like him, when he um, when he talks, when he when he yells instructions, when he does something, everyone listens. So he, I think those two are your biggest uh, biggest gains. Yeah, and I, and I think it's um, you know he's making stuff happen not just physically, mm-hmm. um, like it's not just about him getting involved in the tackles. Like obviously he makes them, but uh, like you said, he's reading the game and he knows when to step in, when yeah. when not and, to. And and as, a, the as a captain, the way he organised that back line too, like mm. you don't you don't see it when you're watching you're watching it on TV, but at the ground off camera, he's he's uh, organising the back. He's from minute one to the ninetieth minute, he's yelling at every single player to get in position. And he's got him organised. He's got him Pro- organised. Probably the only criticism with Reese, he, he could do with a bit of a trim. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, uh, if you're watching, you, have uh, you? This is what it's supposed to look like. Well, Broski, did you? I mean, I'm a hold bit on, of yours as well, and it's nice and. Clean, I'm just, I'm know. just saying. Did you accept his offer? I mean, he he wanted to take you out on a coffee and talk oils. I, will, I mean, I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll take him to my barber. Obviously, I can't, I can't sit on that table because I'm the only one with no beard. I can host. It's okay. You can host it, I can, yeah? I can host it. I'm, I'm there free. There you go, Reese. Reese, uh, enter the call. Broski's <laughs> down to, to come uh, get that coffee with you. And uh, you can talk your oils You're going to mend relations between the two clubs as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know. Um, so I just wanted to touch on, uh, Broski, if we can, maybe like a, a 30 seconds sort of. Just um, because we're talking derby, you've been part of a lot of them. Um, just talk us through maybe you know one of some of the highlights, probably one of your favourite moments in the derby, um, and and we'll go on from there. There's so many, but <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. one, the one, the one. Oh, look, that's hard to be honest. It really is hard. I think there's there's a couple like that are equally as good. I think my first derby, first um, <laughs> and only because just I'd been watching it from far, and I, I remember. See, for me. The, the hate towards the Wanderers, it didn't start at the beginning. I didn't think, because I'm a Westie, right? So I, mm. I saw them come in. I saw what they did that first year, and I loved it because I thought, man, this is great. This is um, what they're doing to the league, what they're now getting out of Sydney FC supporters and what they've turned this into. This is unreal, you know? So I didn't um, – I enjoyed watching them play. I, I was watching from far and, and, and loved it, right? And then when I came back, it was um, – the whole family side of it, friends side of it. That's well, when it we, really we started, started trolling to... you because we had a f- picture of your brother in a in a Wanderers kit, and we we're passing it off as you. <laughs> so we we're like, "Oh, look, Broski signed for <laughs> for us in Sydney." We that's had right, conversations right. at New Year's as well about who you're yeah. going to go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah, on the other right, side of right. that one. Exactly. You had the, the red and black for a, for a time as well. Um, and look, that's where unbelievable. That's nah, where nah, it nah. sort of it, it started for me. You know, like the the whole like living out here and feeling it, and people you know questioning me. You live out here, why? you're playing for them you know and and then um family like obviously said with your brother um <laughs> like staying on the wanderers and not coming over like there was the no which is understandable you know to be fair right he's he's the um he's the one and probably the only one where when derby time comes around i feel like a like he's genuinely torn because he, he i was is, away man. right when he went with the wanderers and and he developed this love for and and just passion for a club which he never had before you know he never really felt a connection to to Sydney FC and um and a club before and then along come the Wanderers and it's his home team and he felt something for him but then I come back and obviously he I'm his cousin and it just made Derby Day terrible for him and I could feel it how good was the family chat (laughs) yeah I know we used to smash him all the time but yeah, I, I got I got to have a word to him because I didn't know any 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 of this, and I was coaching him at, coaching him at the yeah, time. Right, so, right. <laughs> no, nah, look, I, I um, and and he's the one. But 
so with other family, with other friends, um, I didn't feel that. You know, I, I couldn't understand why, why they why they felt that towards the Wanderers and not towards towards someone they know and family. Yeah. You know, even my daughter once said to me, she goes, "Dad, why why are they do they have Wanderers jersey?" And I said, well, because they go for the Wanderers, you know, and they're like, but you play for Sydney. And I said, yeah, that's all right. And she goes, but they know you. you know? Like, <laughs> and we're talking about a five-year-old, whatever she yeah. was at the time, like not being able to understand it. And I know it's very simple, but that's how it sort of was to me as well. I couldn't understand. I thought, you know, if I knew, if I knew someone playing professionally or whatever and it gave me an excuse to follow a team, then I'd be 100% supporting them right and 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 it make it would add something when i went to the game it wouldn't just be watching a club watching a team i, I know someone that's playing yeah. right and for whatever reason they would still support the other team so that always sort of sat a little bit funny with me and that was what fueled my my hate it wasn't they give the you club, stick it um they didn't get we can it. call them they, now. They, no, no, no. they won every game. Exactly right. I only lost one derby in That's five it. years, so that was one game. That I think I, I think sure. it was um to it was the invincible season. You That's guys right. were going yes, invincible. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was, yeah, exactly. I was there. I pr- probably said a few words to you. You probably didn't know who I was. <laughs> which is good. Which is good. <laughs> one nil. <laughs> so really, I think the first derby, then coming back and and getting to feel that initially, like I. I Started to hear things and yeah. people making comments, and I thought, "All right, this is um, for real." You know, people these really guys. don't like <laughs> the fact that I'm because you wouldn't get here. that with the victory because they're not. No, it was yeah. different. You don't feel it exactly yeah. right. Only when you travel there, and even still, we're in the hotel the whole time, don't really see them. But yeah. here, I, I could feel it. Like leading into the derby, there was you know, even though everyone in this area has been been awesome, you know, like to be fair, derby day is derby day. But when I'm home and with the family and at the shops and stuff, people are always great around here, you know, which yep. is what's always been, I've loved it's about a respect. it, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and it's and it goes sort of both ways. So like I said, but that week I could sort of feel that, you know, <laughs> shit, people, You yeah, didn't get yeah. as many texts as you used to that week. Yeah, and then, and then people around here, they're sort of like saying things and looking at me a little bit, you know, differently. And I thought, okay, okay. But you so, knew I was coming on the weekend. <laughs> that was the so yeah, no, it was, um, that, that's when I started to feel, and I thought, right, like I, I, we can't lose this game. And we actually, we went down 2-0. And um, where was that game? Was that, that it? Was oh, was Allianz. that Allianz? Yes, Allianz. of course, of course. That's right. And then, um, yeah, we went down 2-0 and I thought, oh, what man, it's my first derby. I'm going to lose. Game. I'm going to cut shit from everyone I know. And then it just <laughs> turned around. We ended up winning. I scored the winning goal as well. Fans ran on the field. Right? And it was awesome. So there was, there's definitely that one. That's not when they broke the fence, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I've wiped that, that game from Matty, my memory. Matty, so. German, <laughs> Matty German out with injury. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't write that better. Like no, in no, a movie, you'd think right. it's bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's mm. right. Um, and probably, look, a, a couple others. I think the 60,000 one, just because, again, a lot of hype. I made some comments that, that um, <laughs> that's yeah. in pre-season, you know, that we hated them and <laughs> that I told the boys as well. Um, you know, and that that generated a lot of talk. Um, you know, in family <laughs> family <laughs> conversations, <laughs> which is good. Like, I saw yeah, nothing wrong with your comments. I got to be honest. No, nah, nah, <laughs> Look, I think it was good. Plus, it added to it. You know, 100%. even my missus, she had like people texting her saying, "Oh, is he talking about us?" Like when he said he <laughs> hates us. And uh, <laughs> you so got to love that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's where uh, look, it, it it just every game just got like it just compounded. It just meant more and more, and and that fuel just. Grew and grew. So every single derby for me was massive. Do you, do you still feel that, because um, you've described it really well, right, about your derbies, do you feel that it would have felt the same this, like this past weekend for some of the players? Or do we feel like maybe they're not quite invested or because maybe the fans weren't as invested? Uh, look, to be fair, I think it's hard for anyone to feel what I felt. I think it it really is a, a unique sort of position Um for me because just everything everything surrounding my my involvement in the derby like i said when the wanderers came in like the fact that when i i wasn't here when the wanderers started so some family some friends are wanderers fans and then i came back some of them stayed some came back so there's that part to it there's the fact that i live here yep. in the western sydney you know and people don't like that well, he's at westy but he's playing for sydney so there's I don't think that's the case with any other player, you know. So yeah. it really is a unique sort of situation and why it means so much to me personally. Um, but derbies are derbies, you know. Ninko, he, he said it. When you, you asked me about the Big Blue or, or, or the derby, he said this is the game for him, you know. Yep. So um, it definitely means a lot to the players. I, I It's not just me. Uh, probably more so for me because of all those things. But um, look, this is a game when come game day and come match day, 
the fans lift, you know. So the the cove, that's when that they're at their best and their biggest, you know, as well as the RBB. So the players understand when they take that field, they they know they have to win that game. Yeah, and and look, I, I guess um, just while we have you, and the last one for you personally, um, maybe just a career highlight. Oh, career career highlight would be uh, the sixteen seventeen season, um, winning winning that uh, winning that year. Even though we lost that that game to the Wanderers <laughs> that year, um, look, it, 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 I wouldn't change any part of it. I think the fact that we um, we came here and 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 we won it in. In Sydney, the way we did on penalties against Melbourne Victory after the season we'd had, you know, the amount of pressure going into that game and just winning a grand final in front of family and friends, for me it was um, it was the ultimate. And with such a good group of players yeah. as well. Like that group was as close a team, without a doubt, the closest team that I've ever played with. Um, such a good special group um, and bond that we had. Um, and, and that feeling, again, having family and then my little girls running on the pitch after, that's just something that, um, yeah, that, that, that trumps Fairy tale type other. stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep. Bro, can I ask you one thing I've never asked you? I don't know why because I've always been meaning to. It's just a quick one, really quick. Who's the best player you believe you've played with across every, you know, you've played a lot of places. Played with? Oh, that's, that's hard. I guess in, um, look, Ninko's got to be up there just in, in terms of the class, um, you know, and... and uh, it, he slows the game down to the point where y- you can't get it off him, even though he's moving at a, at a slower play, a pace. It's just he's that far ahead in terms of what he wants to do and what he knows you're going to do and he's going to do because of it. He steps ahead of, of everybody, um, yeah. and it's so good to watch because it's watching football um, in slow motion and it's yeah. beautiful and, and his touches. Um, he, he's, uh, look, he's probably my favourite player um, there's been some good quality guys, without a doubt. I mean, you know, Janino, um, a guy from the UAE, Omar Abdul Rahman, yeah. technically the best player I've I've ever seen. Really, in terms of what Jeez. he does with a ball, like okay. it's frightening. Yeah. You watch him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah I've seen him, bro. He's man, a joke. It, it's crazy what he does with a football. But um, just as a person, as a guy, always got time for everybody. Uh, Ninka would be yeah. my favourite. Nice guys. Um, that's a bit of an A-League wrap for, for week one. I um, wanted to say a special thanks to Alex Bross for joining us um, and, and, you know, not holding back. Good. No, like, no, we no, wanted to get no, you involved, which is, which is good. And, uh, and boys, you know, um, jumping on another episode and kicking yeah, off our thanks, A-League. Kev. Thanks, uh, Alex, as well, for coming down. No worries. Um, guys, we're going to do a lot more A-League content. Um, so watch this space and um, we will be doing a preview show for round two. So um, you know the drill, like, share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.